This video, I'm gonna talk about being too nice. Are you too nice and pushing your woman away? The thing is, is people who are too nice really aren't that nice at all. What they are is they're people pleasers. And it could be a man or a woman who's a people pleaser. And there is the nice guy version of that with women as well. But in this video, we're talking about specifically about nice guys and nice guy behavior in the sense that the guy is insecure and he's very approval seeking. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. So with the nice guy, what ends up happening is there's this continuous dialogue within himself that says, I don't matter. And because I don't matter, I need to be whatever this other person wants me to be so that they will like me. So in other words, since I can't get love or self-love or self-validation for myself, I need to continuously get it from outside sources and I constantly need other people to show and demonstrate to me that I'm actually okay, that I'm worthwhile, that I'm lovable, and I'm actually worth something in this world. And so being the nice guy is a way to elicit this behavior from other people. Namely, from women. Generally, the nice guy is looking for this mainly from women. He thinks in his mind that if he can have women love him, if he can have women have sex with him, and he can get a lot of this attention, then he'll finally get filled up and know that he is good enough and he is worthy enough of love in general. The problem with this is that when he goes and does this from these women, they feel that ickiness. She can tell that he wants something from her, but he doesn't really want her intrinsically. In other words, he wants that validation from her. So it puts him in this place of always having to chase after this validation because he's not self-generating it. And this makes him very vulnerable to toxic personalities like narcissism or borderline personality, somebody who would take advantage of this in order to get material gain. So we're gonna get into the signs that you might be being too nice. And any of these behaviors that you're having, we'll also talk about how to root them out as soon as possible so that you can actually have healthy relationships with women and so you can also be attractive to them. Because unfortunately, this insecure behavior is the most unattractive thing that a guy can do in his relationship or when he's trying to go out with women. This is absolutely critical. So the thing that this guy wants, he wants to have this affection, he wants to have this attention, he wants to have this sex, but he can't get it because this very behavior that he's trying to use to elicit what he wants is actually driving the person away. And the irony is not lost on him. The fact is, is that he just doesn't see it. And so we're gonna dive into exactly what these things are so that you can see it, so you can modify that behavior for yourself and make a change and have the kind of relationships and attention that you desire. And so all the way up until December 2nd, I am offering you the audiobook of Betrayed to Badass for just a dollar because that book is powerful and you need to have it in your hands because if you're going through a betrayal situation, you're dealing with lies or manipulation or a wife that just walks away and you can't really understand what's happening and that everything you do is like, it's like she's sand slipping through your fingers. This will turn it around within a couple of weeks. You'll also have the opportunity to join the Genuine Attraction community and you can experience that free for seven days. This community is powerful. There's coaching from me, there's master classes, there's shorts, there's all kinds of things to help boost you forward on a daily basis so that you're not sitting here alone in your pain coming home to an empty house that is echoey because she took all the furniture and you need to have guys around you that have gone through the trenches, they know the game. Why? Because you deserve to win. See, men need to win and they need to win often. And right now, if you're watching this, there's a good chance you've been losing a lot. So let's get your first win and get you into this community. Let's get you to that audiobook for just a dollar and I can't wait to see you inside. So if you find yourself always saying yes, even when you probably shouldn't be saying yes, even when it's something you don't really want to do, why? Because you're afraid to say no. And why would you be afraid to say no? Because you're afraid that the other person might not like you for it. And so guys will find themselves in constant situations like this where he's with his girlfriend or somebody that he's dating and he doesn't want to disagree with her at all because he doesn't want to create any kind of situation where she might not like him. And so he puts this mask on of like, hey, I, I'm just like you. I like all the same things that you like. The problem with this is when you put on this mask of the nice guy, all she can see is the mask or she sees you're putting up the mask and she's like, oh, he's just really insecure. And most of the time they see that but they won't see everything. And so you end up putting this, this facade of who you are and then this woman's trying to see if that's really you and then you wonder why you don't have compatibility later on because maybe she's doing the same thing and you got two people who are mismatched because they're both trying to be something that they're not and then eventually it comes out who you actually are and how you actually operate and then it's like, yeah, you were never compatible to begin with. You guys are just compatible based on who you're pretending to be. And so when you find yourself saying yes to everything, even when you don't really want to, you keep sacrificing yourself, and this is what ends up happening with the nice guy or the people pleaser, is they're constantly sacrificing who they are, what their wants, needs, and desires are in order to, to make the other person feel good so that they can elicit more love, affection, and sex from the other person. 
which leads to part two, which is always afraid of conflict. In other words, if I fight with this person, they might not like me. So they're always trying to find a way to not have conflict. And this is usually why they're saying yes to everything because they don't wanna to have to say no and have a fight or possibly leave them. And that's always the end game with this is that this person's just gonna leave me because they're not gonna like me. And of course they wouldn't like me because I don't like myself. So I have to put on this mask of how I am or how I think this person wants me to be so that they won't actually leave me. But day, deep down, I can feel that I'm actually not that valuable. I actually don't value myself. A lot of anxiety of being cheated on comes from this. And because you're so avoidant of conflict, you end up putting this other person's needs above your own. Often that's your own sacrifice. And I've seen a lot of guys in the Broken and Badass program, they'll come in, they'll tell you their situation about their woman cheating on them or the woman who just doesn't want to sleep with them anymore. Or maybe she left a while ago and he's just trying to get her back. And he ends up saying, yeah, I lost myself completely in the relationship. She even split me from my own children. It's like he was so conflict averse that like he couldn't even tell her no when it came to his own children. And so when in these blended family situations, he's like, I can't say no. I can't even stand up for my own kids. And this thing bleeds into every other situation in his life. And oftentimes the guy will put her above his business. He'll put her over making money, going to work. He may even stay home from work or go on extra vacations just to make her happy. Because he feels like if he can make her happy all the time, then she will never leave him. If he can tell her yes all the time and give her everything she wants, she will never leave him. If he never fights with her, then they never have conflict, then they must have a perfect relationship and she will never leave him. It always comes back to, she will never leave him. And so he plays this pretend game, this game of delusion, of if I am just everything she wants, she will love me forever. Because he says yes to everything, because he's conflict averse, and because he puts her needs above everything else, he makes himself always available to her, again, at his own expense, at the expense of his work, at the expense of his body, at the expense of his children, at the expense of even his relationship with God. This is how guys get into this codependent relationship or they get into this toxic relationship with a narcissist that they can't seem to get out of. And they keep getting trauma bonded to this person, thinking that the only way he can be happy is by being with this person. And so all four of those signs of being too nice means that this guy has a low sense of self-worth which means he has a low sense of who he actually is as a person. He gives everything to this person, becomes everything this person needs in order to get love, sex, and validation. And so he loses himself. He loses himself in the relationship. And most nice guys have a very low sense of self. That's why they all dress very plainly. That's why they kind of act like a wallflower at a party. That's why they don't show a lot of personality. Because any kind of quirk could be considered as something that somebody doesn't like. And so they try to be something that everybody will like. And in becoming what everybody likes, they become very bland and generic as a person. You see, people like you for your quirks and idiosyncrasies. They want to see all that. That's the stuff they can sink their teeth into. That's what makes you unique to you. That's what makes you stand out towards everybody else. So you being able to express who you are and be who you are actually, ironically, gets you a lot more friends. Which leads into the next section here, which is how do I remedy this for myself? So the first step in this is getting clear on what is it that I want in this moment? What is it that I want in life? What is it that I want next week? What do I want next month, next year? And getting clear on what it is that you actually want instead of deferring everything, your wants, needs, and desires onto somebody else. So you getting clear on what you want at any given moment is the first step. The second step is what do you not want? Like what do you hate? What do you not like? Right? Do you hate pizza? It could be something as simple as that. Do you hate country music? It could be as simple as that. It doesn't matter what it is, but just say if you don't like a certain behavior, take note of it. What is that behavior you don't like? What is it that your partner does that you don't like? Getting clear on what it is you like and what it is you want and what it is you don't like and what you don't want. Getting clear on both of these things will set the stage and frame to have a conversation of how to actually change, how to make boundaries in your life and how to actually get away from being this nice guy who is really just a no guy, a guy who doesn't have anything. He has all insecurities wrapped up in just trying to get validation, attention, love and sex. So the first step is realizing that you need to prioritize yourself. And both of these things, both of these conversations, what you want and what you don't want, are prioritizing you. Right? This whole thing, you're prioritizing somebody else. So what we do is we prioritize ourselves by asking two questions. What do I want? What do I not want? And then, once we've realized that I need to be the priority here, the first step is what do I want and expressing that to others. Expressing it to your woman. Hey, this is what I want. I would like to have more affection. I would like to go out more often. I would like to fill in the blank. Now the second part is, and this can be very nerve wracking for some people, especially if they're used to saying yes all the time and putting themselves on back burner in the back seat to all conversations. 
Just expressing what you want is a big deal. The first thing is they're gonna start feeling selfish. Ah, it's selfish, it's always about me. It's like, no, it's not always about you. It's always been about somebody else. And now that you feed, finally expressed yourself on something you wanted, you start feeling selfish and guilty because you've been conditioned that you don't matter and you don't put yourself first. So putting yourself first is exactly what we have to do. I'm not worried about you going too far with this. You won't go too far. And if you do go too far, I know you'll back it off and apologize. But most of the time, a guy will express what he wants and his woman will give him a hard time and test him and say, oh yeah, is that really what you want? And then he backs off and he apologizes. Oh, I guess I'm just being selfish. No, 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 you gotta keep going in this thing. You have to start prioritizing yourself and what it is that you want. Now, the second part of this is getting clear on what you don't want. And how we fix this is you start saying no to the shit you don't want in your life, which means that if she starts behaving a certain way, you're gonna have to tell her no. If you don't want to go to the store with her, don't go to the store with her. And hold firm to the things that you don't want. Again, to prioritize yourself means you have to stand up for yourself. If you're not willing to stand up for yourself, you're telling yourself all the time that you don't matter. Your wants, needs, and desires do not matter. So you have to express what you want and you have to say no to the things that you don't want. And yes, this will invite collision. And you have to get into this place where you're accustomed to inviting collision into your life. You have to because if you don't have the collision, nothing will change. If you're too conflict averse and you're too afraid because you're afraid somebody's going to leave you, you never get to benefit the situation of, wait, well, they actually left you because of you saying no. And then you could actually invite somebody in your life who actually likes what you like. And once you've said what you want and express yourself, and once you've said no about what you don't want, the next step is you don't argue about it. It just is what it is. This doesn't mean you have to go with whatever it is they want, but you say, yeah, that's what I want. And you don't have to justify it. The first thing that a people pleaser is going to do is like, hey, I want to do this, and this is why I want to do it. They have to justify it to the other person to hopefully that they will understand why they want it. And so if it's justified enough, they're hoping the other person will agree. And the thing is, you don't have to do that. It's not your job to justify what you want and what you don't like to other people any more than you have to justify your fucking shoe size or your favorite flavor of ice cream. It just is. And so this is a game of radical self-acceptance unapologetic self-acceptance and expression and holding true to that for the people around you. Now I want you to consider that people who care about you care about what you want. They care about what you desire. And if they don't care about what you want, they don't care about what you desire and they don't care if you say no and they're gonna do it anyway. I want you to also consider maybe they don't really care about you. And you're putting yourself in a situation where you're with somebody who doesn't care about you to reflect your own feeling of self-worth to yourself. You're with this person to keep demonstrating back to you that you don't care about yourself. What you tolerate, you encourage in your relationships. And it's the same thing with yourself. What you tolerate with yourself is what you're encouraging. So if you tolerate yourself not caring about yourself, you tolerate yourself not going to the gym, if you tolerate yourself not having a budget, you tolerate yourself being in a messy situation, a messy house, realize that you're just encouraging more of this in your life and you're not gonna make any changes as long as you're as tolerant as you are. And see, the people pleaser, the nice guy, he's like, I'm very tolerant, I'm very accepting, I want to be nice to everybody, I want to give to everybody all the time. But the problem is that tolerance allows all kinds of crazy bullshit to happen in his life because he's afraid of conflict, he's afraid of saying no, he's afraid of people abandoning him and leaving him. And you have to go the opposite direction. You have to say, no, I'm going to be this. And see, back when I was married, and I found out my ex-wife was cheating on me back in 2015, what I realized was I could be what everybody else wanted and I could still lose in the end. I could be what my ex-wife wanted, I could be what my boss wanted, I could be what my parents wanted, I could be what my children wanted, I could be what everybody wanted and they still fucking leave. So what was the point? At least if I'm myself, I at least have that no matter what. Even if everybody leaves, I could still be me and I could still accept me and I could be me. And see, that is, you're always gonna lose in the end if you don't be who you are. You're never gonna get what you want. You might get it temporarily, but then it's all gonna leave you. It's all fleeting. Everything that you want is now put in the hands of somebody else, but when you flip it around and you become more self-interested, and I'm not saying be selfish, but being self-interested, prioritizing yourself on some level, then you'll realize that even if people leave, you still got you. You're still going to bed at night with you. Even if you have everybody else around you, when you close your eyes at night, you're alone. You always are. And so you have to learn to have this great relationship with yourself. You have to become your own best friend. You have to become your own support network. And when you do this, you become a very secure man. And a very secure man is a very seductive man. And when I'm working with guys in a Broken to Badass program to build a seductive life and also to show them how to seduce their wife, 
and calm their crisis that they've created, what we do is we teach them how to become an absolute soul seducer, right? Reach right into that woman and seduce her soul because he's already seduced his own soul, which is the whole point of this video. The beginning steps of seducing your own soul. If you'd like to learn more about the Broken a Badass program, check it out in the description below. If you're tired of fighting with your wife, if you're tired of all the manipulation, lies, and betrayal that she's doing, we can turn this around in just a week. I know because we have, the, we have the data, we have thousands of guys in this program, thousands of testimonials, hundreds of video testimonials, and the program works. We have iterated the shit out of this and it is an absolute badass program. That's why we call it Broken a Badass. If you want to know more about it, again, click the link in the description below and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.